Hello, it's all here. Welcome to a new video tutorial. In this video, we are going to be working on NetApp Sand Laboratory exercises. So let's get straight to it. So the, the full name of this laboratory is Understand and Manage NetApp on TAP NAS Sand Technologies. I'm sorry, force of habit. Understand and Manage NetApp on TAP Sand Technologies. And this is the RTP session. And for the very first steps for configuring, uh, creating a couple of new aggregates and creating the subnet, uh, I already create those. Uh, you can check uh, in more detail those uh, those steps in my previous video. So from, uh, from the left-hand side menu, we can see those configurations under storage, then aggregates. And here we can see the new uh, aggregates. Then from network perspective, we can see it from subnets. So here's the subnet that, uh, that I have created following the previous steps. So in order to continue with uh, SAN exercises, first we have to create a new SVM. So let's go to storage then SPMs, and we have here to create a new one. And the name of this new SBM is going to be SPM Lons. Uh, protocol to choose is going to be IceCosy. Uh, security style, it's going to be Unix. The root aggregate, we are going to keep uh, the same one selected by default, aggregate one, cluster 101. Uh, for DNS configuration, we can uh, leave the parameters as they are already pre-filled with a demo .com and the name server IP address already established there. Now we can click on submit and continue. And now we are going to configure the protocol. Uh, for this particular one, we have to choose two lifts per node. For assigning the IP address of each lift, we are going to choose the option using a subnet, and we are going to keep uh, the auto select IP address from this subnet, from, I mean, from the demo subnet. We just click on OK. And for the adapter type, we are going to choose, just a second, let me verify, uh, the lab guide NIC. It's going to be just NIC, Network Interface Card. And now for the next step, we have to check a uh, review or modify lift configuration. Once I mark this checkbox, we can see the previous uh, fields are now gray, so we are not able to manipulate them. Uh, for a number of port sets, we are not configured any port set in here as the laboratory system is, is composed of two nodes in HA pair, high availability pair, so no, no need for port sets. And let's take a look to the lab guide. Okay, so here in this, uh, in this window, we are we are going to be able to see the uh, the chosen uh, lives per node. So we can see here uh, the details and the ports selected uh, by automatically by the on tap system. So from node one, uh, these are the ports selected E0C and E0D. Same for node two. Let's click on submit and continue. And now the, we are in the SBM administration, administrator details. So as you know, there is a, an user for, uh, for managing this, uh, the SBMs, uh, which is called BS admin. So here we have to put um, the password that we are going to use for this particular user. Uh, per lab guide is going to be I think it's NetApp 1, so 3, let me double check that. Uh, 
get. That's right. NetApp Quantum Tree. So it can be any 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 credential. So I'm just following the lab guide, but uh, it can be uh, whatever the password. So let's take a look on management interface lift. We have to we have to select a new management uh, interface. So we are going to choose again the option using a subnet. Uh, we are going to auto select uh, the IP address from um, the subnet demo. And for the port, we are going to choose uh, from node one uh, port E0C. We just click on OK then submit and continue okay so for this pop-up i'm just clicking on ever and this is the summary of the svm creation ip space is taken by uh, the default one and here you can see the uh, the information of the uh, general information of the svm about um, the um, its name uh, the security style um, and here on the protocol section, we can see IceCosy configuration, uh, the lifts that are going to be serving the data uh, from from the from the node ports, and the administration uh, overall information. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the IP address that has been uh, provided automatically by the uh, by the automatic feature of NetApp. We just click on OK. And here we can see the, uh, the new SBM co uh, call SBM launch. If we just click on it, we're going to see that iSCSI protocol is enabled for it. This is the iSCSI target node name for that we'll be uh, using later. Okay, so the next step is going to be connect alone to a Windows client. And for this exercise, we have to open the server uh, Windows administrative tools. Once I click here, then we have to go to iSCSI initiator. Um, Then we have to click on configuration and here we can see the initiator name of this particular machine. So uh, to this particular server, we are going to be connecting alone. So I am going to copy this uh, initiator string and I will be pasting in a, a notepad just for a future uh, reference. So it's going to be there. So I am going to close this particular one and I am going to minimize the administrative tools. Okay, so next step, we have to go to storage, then lands. Here we have to create a new one. Uh, then the, the create long wizard uh, comes to the window. We just have to click on next. And here we are going to uh, choose a name. We're going to type a name of, of the new LAN. The new LAN is going to be, uh, the new LAN name is going to be windows.lan. Description, windows LAN. Uh, we can keep the uh, same type of LAN for Windows 2008 or later. Size is going to be 10 gigabytes. And space reserve is going to be disabled. So basically having a, a space reserve configured as disabled, we are saying to NetApp that this is going to be a theme provisioning, a theme provisioned uh, volume or LAN, because uh, from alone, uh, from alone, then it uh, then it got uh, internal conversion to alone. So let's click on next. 
And now, uh, this is what I just mentioned. We have to create a flex volume that will be um, the host of this LAN. For aggregate, we are going to choose the aggregate number one. Let me double check that. Yep. Uh, the name of the volume is going to be Green LANs. And for tiering policy, we have to choose known. Click on next. And then we have to create an initiator group. So, just a second here. So, just a reminder uh, from my notes here, an initiator group or I group uh, defines a list of our channel WWPNs or ICE causing node names of the SAN clients that are, are going to be uh, permitted to access or even see the set of logs. So this is the security um, abstraction layer. And here we are going to put the initiate, uh, we're going to say, uh, set, we're going to set a new initiator. So we just click on add initiator group the name of this particular initiator group, uh, group it's going to be win igrp operating system is going to be windows uh, for the protocol in this scenario we're going to be working with ice cousin and no port set to select then we go and then we have to go to initiators and here we are going to paste, uh, paste the host iSCSI initiator identifier. So we are going to, uh, to paste uh, the one that I uh, previously got on this notepad. And we just hit on create. Great. Now we have this initiator group. Uh, here we have to select this checkbox and then click on next. Uh, next uh, configuration option is for uh, QoS, quality of services, quality of service, sorry. And, but we are not touching anything here. Click on next. This is a summary for uh, a loan uh, of 10 gigabytes and overall information that I just explained. We just click on next and here it is. Now we have a new loan. So we just click on finish. And here we are going to see the loan and in the bottom space, we are going, we are going to see loan properties and same information. And some in addition, we are going to see some uh, performance information like throughput, well, just basically throughput. Okay, so now we are going to configure a space reclamation for LAN. Uh, this particular feature uh, works for uh, thin provisioned LANs. And in case of a user deletes data from a LAN, we are going to be able to reclaim the same at block level from the own tab. This particular feature is not available on GUI. We have to proceed uh, from CLI. So let's go to party. Here is cluster one details. We just click on load, then open. And here uh, we are going to log in as admin and password netapp one. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so I am going to copy the commands just to get this video faster. Okay, so this is the command. Uh, Loon show, then B server, then the path. Uh, dash fields, space allocation. So we can see here that uh, the new loan that we just create, windows.lun, space allocation feature is status disable. And we are going to change that to enable with next command.
would modify then space allocation enable here is the information of the p server or spm and here is the path slash vol slash winlands slash windows dot line so this is volume then is the volume name and then comes the loon name so we just uh, hit enter and then we run a show command again and we can see here the space allocation status is now enabled okay next step is going to be mounting um, the loan in our windows server we have to go back to the administrative tools and click on mpio uh, this is going to be just for showing the current configuration. If we, if we click on discover multiple multi pads, we are going to see that uh, we already have uh, for this lab uh, the support for ISCOSI devices. We just click on OK and let's see the next steps. OK, so uh, we are going to be uh, super cautious on the, on the next steps. Uh, we have to go to Ice Cozy Initiator. Here we are going to see uh, the discover targets. At this point, there is nothing in there. We have to click on Discovery tab. And then Discover Portal. Here we are going to put and the IP address of our lives. So in this case, as you remember, uh, the first IP address is the one finishing with 131. So that's going to be our discover portal. IP address 192.168.0.131. We have to click on OK. Then if we go to targets, we are going to see uh, this number of the NetApp that I'm guessing it's going to be the same one in here. From if we go to SPMs, then if we hit on nice cousin, um, this particular number is going to be the same one that we just saw in here. Look at that. Looks uh, super similar to each other. Yeah, they are the same one. So next step. We have to choose the discover target and then click on connect. Uh, a new a small window comes. Uh, this window name is is connect to target. We have to click on enable multipath, then advance. Okay. So we have to choose here on target uh, target portal IP. Uh, or first leave IP address assigned, 131, then click on OK. Then we click on OK again. And just a second. If I hit here on properties, I am going to see um, this particular identifier, identifier that we just add here. So we have to repeat these steps for the for the three remaining uh, lives. So I have to select this, click on connect, enable multipath, advance, and now I'm selecting IP address number 132. Click on OK, then OK again. Click again on connect, enable multipath, advance, IP address 133. Okay, and okay again. 
click on connect and finally uh, we are choosing uh, IP address no, I'm finishing with 134 click on OK OK if we click again on properties we are going to see a four uh, four paths for the lawn so just a second Okay, so once we are done with that, we have to click here on OK, then go back to Administrative Tools, Computer Management, Disk Management, and now here we can see the loan. And with those previous steps for uh, for configuring the paths, we are uh, we're making sure that we have uh, multiple paths and redundancy for this LAN through two different nodes. Okay, so let's follow up with the steps to make this uh, this particular LAN uh, ready for uh, ready to be used. We have to hit here on right click. Uh, no, right, uh, right click here, then click on line. Then right click again, initialize disk. Uh, here we just click on OK. And now we can see uh, this disk is online. Then we have to have a click uh, new simple volume. Uh, for configuration of this particular storage storage LAN and here we can keep um, the space uh, we can assign it to E drive nothing to configuring here and we can keep NTFS file system uh, the label it's going to be uh, WinLAN click on next and click on finish. Now that we have done that, uh, a new message is coming from the OS, from the taskbar. As you need to format the disk in drive E before you can use it or you want to format it. We just have to cancel this because the volume is already to be used. Uh, this particular configuration uh, we perform it while creating the LAN during uh, with the uh, loan creation wizard. That's the reason why he's asking for the uh, for the OS where the loan is going to be mounted. So if I go to my PC for this server, uh, here am I going to be able to see uh, the loan, I, and I am going to I am going to be able to uh, to work from here. So I can create here a new folder. Then inside I can create any new TXT file. Hi, this is Saul. Okay, so I can I can close this file, then open it again, and here we can see that the storage is working as expected. Storage lab is working as expected. So I'm closing this and this, this particular one. Okay, next is just exercise. Uh, mount a loon to a Linux server. So as we perform on the Windows machine, we have to get the ISCOS initiator from, from the Linux host. So from party, uh, from party I have to open the the Linux machine, red call rel one, click on load, then click on open. Uh, we are going to log in as uh, root. Password is netapp one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So in order to get that particular ice cosy, we have to 
go to change directory to edc uh, slash iscosi if we perform an ls uh, we are going to see three, these three files uh, the one that, uh, that is important right now is initiator name dot iscosi okay so this is the uh, new initiator for the linux machine i am going to select it and paste it in our uh, not bad file okay so let's go back to storage then launch and we are going to create a new LAN for uh, now for linux we click on create this is the long wizard. Click on next. The name of the new LAN is going to be linux.lan. Uh, description Linux LAN. OS. It's going to be Linux. Size 10. We can put here 10 as well. A space reservation. Uh, disable. Then click on next. Create a new flex volume in aggregate one. Uh, the name of the volume, the flex, the new flex volume is going to be Lin Lance. Uh, for tiering policy, uh, we have to choose known. For the initiator snapping, click again on add initiator group. The name of the group is going to be uh, Lean IGRP Job. Lean IGRP OS Linux type iSCSI. Yeah, for initiator, I think it should be in my clipboard. Job. Uh, click on Create. And I have to check, uh, to mark this checkbox. Click on next. We can skip uh, quality of service. The summary of this operation, 10 gigabyte uh, loan for Linux. Space reservation disabled. For, uh, for making this uh, volume as theme permissioned. And then we can get advantage of the special reclamation feature. Click on next. And now the new loan has been created. Click on finish. And here we are going to see it. It is uh, right here. So let's continue with um, uh, with a space reclamation feature on uh, for this new loan. As I mentioned before, we have to proceed uh, on this from uh, NetApp CLI. This is our CLI, and I am going to change uh, the command uh, from here. So this is pointing to the Windows uh, volume and Windows LAN. So now it's going to be uh, lin lan slash Linux LAN, Linux.LAN. Okay, so this is the and the Linux LAN space allocation feature is disabled. So now we have to modify that command from Luch show uh, to LAN modify. Uh, we can keep the server then the path. And we have to remove uh, dash fields to have as final uh, command dash space allocation enable. Okay, then let's run a show again. And now a space allocation feature is enabled, and now we are going to be able to reclaim the data. In case a user um, deletes from from their perspective, ONTAP can do the same from block level. Now, let's mount this LAN in our Linux machine. I am going to minimize this guy. I am going to minimize uh, the NetApp UI. And let's open our 
Linux machine. So uh, we have to change the directory cd and I am going to run several commands from the lab guide. The first one is this one rpm and as, as we are running a grep we can see that um, the NetApp Linux utilities, uh, Linux Unified host utilities, it's already installed in this machine. And next command is the initiator name, which we already uh, have done it, which is a cat to that particular initiator name that I so this is the uh, this is the initiator same as this one so basically uh, it's the same now um, next command is going to modify the timeout session no I'm sorry uh, we are not to we are not going to modify we are going just to see that particular uh, configuration for the timeout with next command. His grep replacement time and uh, it's reading it from iscosiid.com file. So uh, this is a new time uh, equals to five, the replacement timeout. And then not a startup for the iscosi configuration should be automatic we can see it that we can see that with this command note that a startup equals to automatic uh, making a grep to note dot startup uh, making a grep uh, with the keyword note dot startup to the icecoceid.conf file next command will show us the device mapper that's already in here rpm-q device mapper here is a version of the device mapper now we are going to verify uh, the device mapper multipath here we can see uh, the version for the multipath and now we are going to see uh, the multipath configuration Uh, we are seeing the multipath configuration with a cat, a concatenation, in multipath.com file. So this is coming from NetApp. As you can see it here, these are the default set NetApp recommends. Now we are going to just a second so now now we are going to start the iscosi software service on this linux machine and configure it to start automatically at boot time we are going to achieve that uh, with this uh, command systemctl status iscosi service here we can see it is disabled now we are going to start it very similar command instead of status it's going to be start as you can see at the here enter then after we have started we have to enable it uh, this is the command systemctl enable icecosi id and uh, now if i hit uh, the up arrow uh, key to the status again we are going to see that uh, the ice cosy daemon uh, started uh, with this particular process id okay now we are going to discover the available targets using the ice cosy atm command so let me copy that command 
ASCOSI IDM dash dash mode discovery up update type send targets and then we have to specify the, uh, the ASCOSI portal which is going to point to our our first uh, data lift IP address which is 192.168.0.131 uh, okay, so here we can see four values, each for every IP address. Here we, you can see 131, 134, 33, and 32 for multipathing. Uh, let, uh, at this point, we can see the multipathing, but uh, there is no session established there. We can see that with next command, ice cozy mode, session, we, here we can see it, no active sessions. In order to start the session, we have to submit next command, ice cozy ADM dash dash mode, node dash, um, dash L all. So here we can see that uh, the session has been established. So if I hit uh, again the, uh, the mode session command, here we can see uh, the four sessions. Uh, let me expand this window a little bit and run it again. So here we can see the four TCP sessions for those uh, uh, lifts, those ISCOSI lifts. Now we are going to see uh, the LAN with next command send LAN show. Oh, I'm missing something. It's send LAN, then LAN show. So at this point, uh, on Linux machine is seeing um, these LANs through four different sessions, but it's thinking that it's four different devices. So we have to unify that with the multipath. So next command to run, it's going to be systemctl status multipath. Uh, here we can see it's active. Um, and now we are going to, um, just a second, um, I'm reading the lab guide. We are going to create the file system. And we are going to achieve that with this command, multipath uh, dash ll. And now let's run again the send uh, learn show, but now with a flag dash p. Oh, again, it's send learn then learn. So here we can see it, it's a loan of 10 gigabytes. This is the on tap pad. And here we can see the four leaves now uh, for uh, for four different paths. Uh, okay. So before we uh, we mount it, uh, we we can see this particular file system in our dev mapper with next command. Uh, if we uh, run an ls in slash dev slash mapper. Here we are going to see our LAN with those identifier numbers, and uh, which are the same as like uh, this host device number. So now we have to create uh, uh, one second. So as you can see here, we can see this LAN as a 
as a device inside the mapper. Now we have uh, from this device we have to create a file system. We are going to achieve that uh, with next command. It's called make file system mkfs dot x4 slash step mapper slash sorry slash step slash mapper and now we have to uh, to point to this particular device hit enter great file system done now we have to uh, create a new directory where this file system is going to be mounted we have to run an mkd here and the directory name is going to be linux land Okay, here we can see I have a new directory called Linux LAN, this particular one. So now we have to mount it. Uh, before I mount it, let me see the current mountings with df command. So these are all local mounts. Uh, for mounting, we are going to run the next command. Uh, my bad. Um, mount dash T X four, and here we can see the the file system. Mount can find. I miss, am I missing something? Jab. I'm missing. Uh, oh man. <laughs> I'm missing the, the target of this mount, which is going to be our new uh, directory that we just created uh, Linux LAN. Great. So if I click on the F, here we can see that uh, Linux LAN. Um, it's part file system or file system that we have been configuring. It's now part of this directory called Linux LAN. So if I go there, if I perform an list, uh, obviously it is empty and we can create a, a new file for testing. I am going to do that with an echo, echo hello from rel1, and I'm, I'm sending this right uh, to Linux LAN, and the name of the file is going to be test.txt. So if I hit enter and then click again on an ls for listing the files, here we are going to see the test.txt new file. So then the final step is going, uh, we are going to read that file with a cat. And here we can see the hello message from hello from rel1. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your time. This is it.